we finished our last video asking ourselves, is every set of Lebesgue measure zero countable? Well, Cantor's set comes here to explain us why this is not true. Cantor's set is an uncountable set that has Lebesgue measure zero. So let's build it. The idea is to start with the interval zero one. And what I'm gonna do is actually draw it. So we start with this, we have here the set the number zero and the number one. And what we will do is divide this interval in thirds. So here we have the one third and the two thirds. And we will remove the third that is in the middle. So uh, this is the stage zero in the construction of the counter set. In the stage one, we will have the zero up to one third, and then from the two thirds up to one. So this is the first stage in the construction of the counter set. And now we continue doing the same. We grab this first interval and we divide it in thirds. And same for the second one. So in the second step in our construction, we have from zero to this number, from this here and this other two parts. And again, we do the same. We grab each of these intervals, divide it in thirds and remove the middle part. So in the third stage, we will have this. So you can see that our set is getting smaller and smaller. Well, what is counter set? So each of these is a step in the construction of the counter set. And so what we will do is define C, the counter set, as the intersection over all these steps. So we continue doing this, so dividing in thirds and removing the middle third up to infinity. So we will intersect from k equals 1 up to infinity all these sets. This set, this limit set, is going to be called Cantor set. So what's important is, well, first of all, Cantor set is not empty because if you check, for example, number 0, in every stage in the construction we can see that it's here because we will never remove the first interval. So zero is part of counter set. The same happens, for example, with one. One is never removed because it is in the rightmost extreme and we are always removing middle thirds, not right or left thirds. So one is also in the counter set. And actually, it can be proven that Cantor set is the set of all the numbers x that can be written, x in the 0, 1, that can be written in base 3 as a sub j, 3 to the minus j, where a sub j is different to 1. So basically, it's the set of all the numbers in the 0, 1 that we can write in base 3 using only zeros and twos. But for measure theory, we will be using this other definition. This is just a curiosity. So we will see that Cantor set is uncountable and that it has Lebesgue measure zero. To prove first that the Cantor set is countable, we will see that it is perfect. And not because it's a beautiful set, which it is, because perfect means that any point in the set is a limit point. That is, for any point in the Cantor set, we can find a sequence of points in the Cantor set that converge to that point. So let's look again at Cantor set, or not Cantor set itself, but each of these C sub k's that form it. So let's see how many intervals do we have on each stage. So on the first step, we have one interval, the zero one. On the second step, we have two intervals. In the third step, we have one, two, three, four intervals. 
In the third step, we have eight intervals. And so we kind of realize what's going on. Well, this is the step number zero. And so it has two to the zero intervals. The first step has two intervals, so it's two to the one intervals. The second step has two to the power two. The third one has two to the three and so on. We can say that CK has two to the K intervals. And what is the length of these intervals? The step zero has length one because it's just a zero one. The first step we have two intervals, zero, one third, two thirds, one. So each of these intervals has length one third. Then the second step we have the divided by three, the length. So it's one third divided by three is one over nine. And so we can see that this one will be one over three to the power three. Okay, that is the length of each one of these intervals. The second one was one over three squared. And so we can say that in the k step, we have two to the k intervals of length one over three to the power k. So if I grab a point x that is in the counter set, then there exists some x sub n that's going to be in the nth step of the construction for which the distance between x, the set I'm grabbing in the counter set, and x sub n will be less than 1 over 3 to the power n and greater to 0 because I can actually grab this x sub n to be different to x. And so if I do this for every step, then I will have x of 0, that's going to be distance less than 1, x of 1 is going to be distance less than a third, x2 distance less than 1 over 3 squared, and so on. I can do this for every step, and I will get a sequence of sets x sub k that are in the kth step of the construction, and that will obviously converge to x. So I was able to find the sequence conversion to my point x. And this tells me that x is a limit point in the Cantor set. And so c is perfect. And now it can be proven, I'm not going to do it in this video, but it can be proven that any perfect set is uncountable. And so obviously the counter set is uncountable. So we have that the counter set is uncountable. Now we have to prove that the measure is zero. And to calculate the measure, we're going to do somewhat the opposite of what we've done so far. So first we calculated how many intervals do we have in the counter set and what's the length. Now we will calculate how many intervals we have removed. And obviously the length is going to be the same because this middle third has the same length as the thirds I actually kept. So on each step, how many do I have? Well, it's very simple. I will have two to the k minus one. So what is the measure of the Cantor set? Well, I can just take the measure of the zero one, the whole interval, and remove the measure of all the sets I removed from the interval. So in the first stage, I removed one interval of length three. In the second step, I removed two intervals of length nine and so on. So basically I'm having that, well, this is the measure of the zero one minus, and I will have the sum from k equals 
1 up to infinity of 2 to the k minus 1 divided by 3 to the k. So the amount of intervals I removed multiplied by the length, that is 1 over 3 to the k. And this for every step, so from k equals 1 up to infinity. So, well, the measure of the 0, 1, we already know how to work with Lebesgue measure, this gives us 1. And for this sum, let me reaccommodate it, I'm going to have the sum from k equals 0 up to infinity, and for this let me common factor 1 third, so I will have 2 to the k minus 1 divided by 3 to the k minus 1, and starting the sum from 0, this one was starting from 1, I will have 2 to the k divided by 3 to the k. And so this is a geometric series, we know to what it converges. So I will have 1 minus 1 third, and the ratio is 2 thirds, so it will give me 1 minus 2 thirds, 1 over that. And this is a very simple calculation, 1 third times this number is equal to 1, and so we have 1 minus 1 is zero. So the Cantor set measures zero. And so we have constructed the first non-countable set that has Lebesgue measure zero, and this is amazing, it's a very important set in measure theory. In the videos which follow, we will see another construction very similar to the Cantor set, but in this case the resulting set will not have measure zero. We can actually make it so that the measure of this resulting set has any measure we want it to have, smaller to 1 because we will always be working with a 0, 1, and this will give us a few variants of the Cantor set to work with. If you haven't already, make sure you follow us on Patreon, we have amazing things for our subscribers. Join us by clicking the link in the description of the video.